Beyond the Universe is a movie that revolves around a young woman, Nina, who finds love unexpectedly in the process of seeking a kidney transplant. The film kicks off with a young brunette, narrating how difficult it is to find someone, a soulmate, in a world filled with two billion people. She is seen being rolled into the hospital on a gurney, and narrates how she had always wanted to be a pianist, since the age of eight. In her flashback, a younger Nina is seen, sitting at a makeup table, adding some eyeshadow, and prepping for her performance. She heads to the stage, where the audience awaits her performance. She sits by the piano, and begins to play. She abruptly stops, as blood drops down her nose, and splatters on the piano keys. In frantic, she glances at the audience, who is surprised by her pause in the performance. In an attempt to leave the stage, she gets up but then collapses. Nina reveals that she is lupus, by stating that her dream of being a pianist was devoured by the wolf. Wolf means lupus in Latin. She explains how it has attacked all of her organs, including her kidneys. At present, the doctor calls for her, and states that the only solution to the lupus is that she would need a kidney transplant. Her grandpa is seen as her only family member, and often accompanies her to hospital checkups. Nina is further told that she would be needing dialysis three times a week and would have an IV attached to her arm. To her disappointment, she is informed that she would be on the waitlist for a new kidney, and the waitlist could take between six months and a few years. She asks for how long. The doctor gives her a number that says 14,890 on the waitlist. This causes her to be pessimistic about her recovery or an organ donation. A month later, she is seen doing the dishes, cooking dinner for her grandfather, and dancing to Spanish music. She gives him one piece of bread, because of his diabetes. Unknowingly, the mischievous old man sneaks another piece of bread into his coat, while she isn't looking. He offers to accompany her, for her first day of dialysis. She tells him that he should stay at home, and watch telenovelas. She promises that she will be fine on her own. From the art section of the newspaper, she discovers an opening for a pianist at the prestigious symphony orchestra, and decides to audition. In the conservatory, she works in schools, she teaches piano to a young girl named Gia. When the girl complains about not being able to play, because of the size of her hands, Nina states that the secret to playing piano is the size of dreams, not hands. Nina asks for permission from the conservatory head, Lourdes telling her about her application for the position of the pianist. Nina asks that since she doesn't have a piano, she would love to use the one at the conservatory. Lourdes reminds her that she would need to handle classes at night, piano lessons and her treatment too, and that it might be a lot to handle. When Gina states that she can do it, the woman agrees, but only if it won't affect her classes. A young man on the bike, Gabrielle is seen rushing through a busy road, while Nina walks through the train station. Nina sees a piano, and begins to play beautifully for everyone at the station. Gabrielle listens to her, and is hypnotized by her music. Nina imagines herself in another world, on the cloud, alone and enjoying the moment. She steps out of her reverie when Gabrielle slams into the piano, in the process of running from security. Just like the security does, Nina tells Gabrielle that he cannot ride a bike into the train station. He says he got distracted by hearing her play, and teases that he loves Ed Sheeran, and she argues that it was Chopin. He apologizes for interrupting her, and tells her to continue playing. She leaves, after replying that he ruined the mood. Gabrielle then flirts with her, saying that they can see each other, and she responds with indifference. He watches her with a smile as she leaves. Gabrielle is a resident doctor at the hospital. Upon arriving at the hospital, he helps his outspoken colleague, Yuri, with the proper diagnosis of a patient's illness. Breaking the hospital rules, Gabrielle sneaks food into a patient's ward, a man who is not allowed to take flan. Gabrielle is seen as the reliable and fun kind of doctor. Leaving the ward, he encounters the head nurse and his close friend, Raymonda, who tells him that his father, who is also the director of the hospital, Alberto, would be upset if he is caught sneaking food into the people's ward. Gabrielle shrugs it off, indirectly says that he doesn't care. He goes back home to his roommate, Yuri who is also gay. Yuri narrates how he met a man on a dating site, and is terrified of meeting up with him. Gabrielle also mentions that he found someone in the train station but doesn't know anything about her, and that she can play Chopin. Nina and her grandpa are in the hospital, and are called in by Raymonda into an office. Both Gabrielle and Nina are confused to see each other at the hospital. He explains that he is a resident doctor under training. While she undergoes dialysis, he checks in on her, telling her that everything would be okay. Nina is indifferent, that the dialysis machine would be stuck to her day and night. He comforts her that with this, she can live a good life. Nina sees him as an optimistic person, and sees herself as a half-glass-empty kind of girl, a pessimist. He tells her that the process would only take four hours, and urges her to do it. She thanks him for the comfort, before he leaves. The next scene opens up with her practicing the piano. Lourdes tells her that the conservatory would need to terminate the service contract between her and them, because she missed her class by six. The woman tells her that she needs to get better, and then when she does, she can come back and practice. Nina is left without a piano to practice, for her audition. 
Gabriel and Yuri walk into the hospital storage room, in search of the heater. Gabriel discovers a piano there, and remembers her. The next day, when he gets to the hospital, he is told by Raymunda, that Nina isn't particularly in a good mood. Raymunda tells him that he can find her on the terrace. Gabriel meets up with Nina. When he stands over the edge, she asks him if he is afraid of heights, and he answers that he is not. She then teases him for being a doctor, cyclist, and mountain climber. She shares her story about lupus, and it is preventing her from getting her dream job as a pianist. He encourages her, saying that she is a natural at playing piano. She asks him if he has seen an orchestra, and he wittingly replies that he hasn't, because he is poor and uncultured. He provides her a chance to play the piano in the hospital storage room, and tells her that she can now audition for the symphony orchestra. She thanks him, but also informs him that the day was the last to register, and she wasn't able to make it. Gabriel is very determined to get her to the place, they both ride to the registration on his bike. Realizing that it is closed, Nina lies to the registration worker that her grandfather just died, and he collaborates on her lie. When Nina begins to fake cry, the woman agrees for her to fill out the form. Nina thanks Gabriel for his help, and then goes back home. While preparing dinner, Nina tells her grandpa, about the two stages of the competition. She could play for the jurors, and the second part is that she could have a scholarship. He asks her if she is in love, because of her cheery mood. She jokes that she is in love with Chopin. She tells him that she has bigger concerns than romance. Back in Gabriel's place, Yuri laments that he doesn't want to meet the Tinder boy, because he is scared. Gabriel convinces him to do so, and that anyone would love him. Nina texts Gabriel to appreciate him for helping her with the audition, and then asks if she can send some of the Brazilian rice for lunch tomorrow. He declines that, saying he has lunch plans, and she is disappointed. Yuri reminds him that he cannot get close to a patient, because of the hospital rules. In the hospital, Gabriel is told that his father, Alberto wants to see him. It is seen that he has a dysfunctional relationship with his father. Alberto warns him that the way he relates to patients is very risky, and it would get him into trouble one day. Upset, Gabriel leaves the office and goes to the locker room. He goes to meet Nina at the piano place, he sits down with her, and plays a tune named Chopsticks. But she plays it in a better way. She complains that she needs to play very well, if she wants to be accepted into the orchestra. She informs him that she has never ridden a bike, and they strike a deal, that she would learn how to ride a bike, and he would learn a new song on the piano. Nina starts to teach him how to play, and he tries to teach her how to ride a bike. While she has her dialysis, she places a happy emoji sticker on the dialysis machine, proving that she may be happy and encouraged now. She plays a song for him, and he watches her in admiration. She tells him that she hasn't finished the song, and feels that there is something beyond the universe, and that people exist there. She celebrates the fact that he can play a tune, and invites him to the club. The bartender asks him if they would drink something. Gabrielle advises that she shouldn't, because of her fluid intake from the dialysis. She asks him if he is present as a friend or a doctor. He answers friend, and refuses to drink for her sake. She asks him to dance, and places the neo ink on his face. They begin to dance. While in her next dialysis session, she engages in a conversation with a vivacious woman named Amanda. She narrates that her daughter gifted her a lucky cup, to help her with her dialysis. Amanda tells Nina not to lose hope, and that she may get a kidney. The woman explains that this is her second kidney that is failing. Nina asks Amanda if she is scared, and Amanda says she is scared for not being there for her daughter. She further says her daughter inspires her to see the world. The woman catches her staring at Gabriel, and says that Nina won't be pessimistic for so long. Both Gabriel and Nina go for the audition, she is nervous about the audition as she fidgets. The man tells her that there are four judges, and she tells him that she would be playing Beethoven's Sunlight Sonata. He tells her not to exceed her time, and wishes her good luck. She prepares to play, but stops halfway when she feels pain. She picks up again, doing it better. The judges seem impressed by her performance. When she steps out, Gabriel notices her solemn mood. He immediately thinks that things do not go well. A smile cracks up on her face, and she says that it was a success. They embrace and are about to share their first kiss, but he stops her, and invites her to his home for dinner. Back at his apartment, Gabriel asks Yuri to cook for him, and to repay him, he would cover his two shifts at the hospital. He prepares for her visit by cleaning the apartment, while Yuri cooks. The doorbell rings, and Gabriel thinks it is Nina, instead, it is Yuri's Tinder date, Chileo. The doorbell rings again, and Gabriel answers. Nina is behind the door and jokes, saying that she is the new neighbor, and if she could borrow some sugar. He mentions that they have rice instead. They are confused about whether to hug or kiss, she kisses him on the cheek twice. Yuri, Nina, Gabriel, and Chileo chit-chat during dinner. When she drums her fingers to the table, Yuri jokes if she plays piano at dinner, and she says it's an involuntary movement. Chileo then jokes about the IV on her arm. There is an uncomfortable silence in the room, and she looks over her arm. She tells him about the dialysis. Chileo unconsciously continues to make her uncomfortable. Gabriel shuts him up, by putting some wine in his glass, which he is allergic to. 
Chileo further jokes about Nina not being able to do a lot because of lupus, and Gabriel takes a stand for her, saying that dialysis is not a death sentence. Nina places a hand on his, soothing him as she explains to Chileo about the situation of her diagnosis. Gabriel gets Yuri to leave the apartment with Chileo so that he can be alone with her. She tells him that she loves the stars. He takes her to a place where she can see the stars properly. They stand outdoors and hold hands. He asks her to make a wish. It begins to rain while both make their wishes. She begins to take off her clothes, and he joins too. They have their first kiss in the rain, and eventually sleep under the stars. The next day, for breakfast, he makes her eggs and ketchup, a meal that his father used to give to him when he was younger. She asks him if he is a doctor because of his father. He responds that it is because of his mother, and reveals that she had breast cancer. She passed away when he was 13, and every year on her birthday, he goes to the mountain to celebrate her memory. He promises to take Nina when she gets a new kidney. Nina is summoned by the doctor, who tells her that her kidneys are failing fast, and Nina fears that she would never have a transplant. To help her, Gabriel fills up an organ donation form to see whether he can donate to her. He argues with Raymunda that he doesn't need his father's permission to help Nina, whom he loves. Yuri comes home, crying, saying that Chileo is married to another man and is toxic. Gabriel comforts Yuri in the bathtub and tells him that if he doesn't find someone else, he would marry him. Gabriel leaves when his father calls, asking him to come home immediately. On getting to his father's home, Gabriel sits at the piano and begins to play. Alberto teases that the piano was bought by his mother, because it was decorative and pricey. He then confronts Gabriel about the compatibility test for Nina. Gabriel is upset, when Alberto says that he is beginning to cross some boundaries. He then informs him that the test was negative, and he is not compatible with her. Gabriel throws his father's mistakes in his face, and castigates him for not being there for his sick mother, by being in surgery all the time, buying expensive things, or attending a fancy conference, and neglecting his wife. Life. Gabriel is upset when his father threatens to report him to the residency committee, and he may lose his job in the hospital. In response, Gabriel drinks the whiskey in his father's hands, challenging him and storms out. Gabriel reveals to Nina that he took the test, and reveals that it came out negative. She appreciates him for trying, and that she would do the same for him. She hasn't decided if she wants someone else's kidney inside of her. She has a quick reverie, where she performs in the arena, and Gabriel bows with her after the performance. At work, Gabriel finds out that his father put him in the emergency room to work, so that he would be away from Nina. Nina is at the audition, and texts Gabriel if he would be there. He is running late. The judge asks her to perform a piece from Concerto No. 2 by Rachmaninoff. Gabriel is seen cycling fast to the venue, and eventually gets into an accident. Immediately, she gets the vision of a blood drop on the piano keys. She realizes that she is bleeding, and then soon collapses. Gabriel arrives in time, when the ambulance is about to leave. Nina wakes up in a hospital bed and the doctor tells her she was unconscious for three days. The doctor mentions that the lupus is active, and says that she needs to have better medication. Gabriel arrives and gifts her a paper rose, and then apologizes for not being there for her. She believes her luck is beginning to run out. While he tries to comfort her, she tells him that she can't have hope right now. Nina is seen covering the piano, as she is not happy anymore. Gabriel sees her on his day off, and hands her his phone. She reads an email that he has been convoked to the hospital's committee meeting, about his relationship with her. He comes back into the room, and asks if everything is okay, and she lies to him. Nina returns home with her grandpa. Gabriel comes to see her when she doesn't answer his phone calls or text messages. He asks her why she left the hospital without telling him. He tells her that he is willing to tell the symphony orchestra judges about her second chance. She is pessimistic and says that she could pass out on the stage for the second time. She tearfully says that she would never be normal. She then breaks up with him, trying to fix all the problems she has created. She says he is the doctor, and she is the patient, and that's the only relationship they should have. She tells him that she would die, and he has his whole life ahead of him. Gabriel tries to convince her, and tells her that he wants to be with her. She brings up the residency meeting, and asks him for the reason he was hiding it. He tries to tell her that the meeting has nothing to do with her, but with his father. She is upset that they could fire him. He tells her that he can get a new job. She is upset that he is trying to fix everything, and tells him that she is done. He gets upset when she says that she can't waste anything on her treatment, and indirectly thinks that she is saying he is a waste of time. To fix everything, she tells him to apologize to his father and get his job back. When she says that she has always been alone, and would be fine, he says that she didn't have to go through it alone, and eventually leaves her. She goes back into her room and cries, mourning the death of the relationship. Gabriel and Nina are both in the hospital, and won't talk to each other. Amanda gifts her lucky cup, given to her by her daughter, Lara. Amanda senses her sadness, and Nina reveals that she broke up with Gabriel. Nina reveals that she still loves him, and only broke up with him because of his job. Amanda comments that her actions were noble, but also stupid. She chastises her for not wanting to love and live. Raymunda informs her that the committee meeting is today, so she can still fix everything. Inspired by her friends, Nina hurriedly leaves and intrudes during the meeting. 
They ask her to leave, and she says she is not going to, until she wants to. She speaks about how she has been coming into the hospital since age 13, and is more familiar with the surroundings than anyone present. Nina talks about Gabriel being the best doctor, she tells them that if they expel him, the patients would suffer the loss. She says that the relationship between them has always been professional and respectful. She further says that she's the one who chased him, and babbles about being the one who kissed him first. The director stops her. Before leaving, Nina asks them to not make a bad decision. Gabriel sends her a smile before she leaves. Gabriel reveals to Yuri that he is still a resident doctor, and the meeting went well. He asks that Raymond to meet him in the chapel for a secret project. Nina wakes up to her phone ringing. Raymond invites her to a birthday party that she would be having for Amanda. Raymond tries to convince her, but Nina wants to sleep. Amanda then tells her to stand up and that she would see her at 7 for the party. The director of the hospital, Alberto sees that something is up and asks Yuri who tells him that Gabriel is planning a party and that his father should give him a chance. Raymond addresses Nina up upon arriving at the hospital. Gabriel plans an opportunity for her to play for the hospital people. In the perfectly arranged and beautiful room, she sits down and prepares to play for them. In a distance, Gabriel sees his father who lets the event be. Gabriel smiles at her while she plays. Once she finishes, they clap for her. One of the judges for the orchestra was present and tells her that she would discuss her case with the other judges so that she can have another chance to audition. Nina apologizes to Gabriel, and in response, he tells her that he wasn't expelled. They reconcile with a kiss. It is Gabriel's mother's birthday, and Nina asks Gabriel to send him a video of him on the mountain. He promises to do so and gives her the necklace his mother gifted to him. The necklace is to look after her before he comes back. Gabriel is seen on the mountain. He puts a picture of his mother and a scarf on the mountain, honoring her memory. When the picture flies away, he tries to get it back by tying a rope to a rock and sliding down from the mountain to get it. In the process, the rope breaks off and he falls off the mountain. Nina, while playing the piano, feels that something is wrong. Gabriel is brought in on a gurney to the hospital. His father, Alberto, is saddened to see him in pain and is told that Gabriel was brought by a helicopter and a suffered head injury. After doing a CT scan, they found a subdural hematoma. They would need to perform surgery on him. Nina rushes in to see him and is told that he is in the operating room. She meets his father, who is crying. Gabriel couldn't make it after the surgery. In memory of him, the hospital arranges a candlelight program, and Nina mourns him by thinking about both of them dancing. Depressed, Nina views the video Gabriel had sent to her from the mountain before his death. Her grandpa attempts to make her feel better, saying that Gabriel only wanted to see her happy and living. On getting to the hospital, Nina is told that she has an organ donor, and it is a living donor. It is revealed that Gabriel's father is Nina's donor. He comes over to her house, and she gives him ketchup and eggs. He tells her that he invented ketchup and eggs, because Gabriel was always hungry, and he needed to feed him. Nina assures him that Gabriel never forgot it, and always loved him. When she asked about him being the donor, he answers that his old professor once told him that medicine is about finding a cure, but also about finding relief and comfort. He reveals that he did it for his son. He can see aspects of his son in her. They share an embrace. The next scene opens up with both the director and Nina on a gurney and going to the operating room. She narrates that she got a kidney on her birthday September 30th, and she understood what it meant to be compatible with someone. Nina attends Yuri's wedding ceremony as he marries another man. She is then seen playing the piano in front of everyone. She thanks everyone in the audience and then pays tribute to Gabriel by singing Beyond the Universe, which she wrote for him. To honor his memory, she goes to the mountain and imagines him sitting next to her. The movie ends with both sharing a kiss in the outer universe.